Hello everyone, this is Mr. Boat here. I welcome you to this wonderful program, this great opportunity to learn forex on your own, to become your own person in charge of your financial freedom. Over the next couple of weeks, I'd, I'll be having a meticulous video tutorials training on how to trade the largest financial market in the world. What you are about to view here is unique. I've tried to play it uh, in such a way that it will be readily comprehend every beginner or every beginning trader. And the method and concepts also accessible in this video is as a result of my own personal experience from the market. So the purpose of this material is to equip viewers with uh, concepts and techniques treat the financial markets comfortably. It will be very demanding and stressful depending on wherever you are coming from. But if you are able to stay focused, and that is what I'm going to share with you. You never forget the day you made up your mind to learn how to trade this largest financial markets. Well, you see, this important bulletin. Okay, so trading forex, CDFs, commodities carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. You may lose more than your initial deposit and could be required to deposit additional funds. And so what you are about to learn over here is um, purposely educational and not any financial instructs. So please do well to comprehend the risk and take care to manage your exposure. And practice all the strategies that will be shared here with you on your demo account before trading on your live account. And also do well to know your risk appetite in order to in order not to um, probably invest money that um, you yourself you are not or you cannot afford to lose. Yes, so um, the outline below will serve as a guide through the entire journey. And I have categorized the whole lessons into four stages. At the first stage or the stage one, we shall be looking at um, a brief introduction of forest. Um, what, for, what is forest? Um, what is traded on forest? Who is a forest broker? Trading times and trading sessions terminologies used in forex, forms of trading, currency pairs, MT4 interface part 1. Then stage 2, we look at what we call pips, concept of ask and bid price, what is spread, forms of trading orders, concept of take profit and stop loss, leverage, loss size, risk management and some other common mistakes by some traders and MT4 interface part 2. For stage 3, we are going to look at, um, that is the main work or the main journey. So we're looking at um, how to know when to actually buy or sell, how to generate signals for yourself, what price action is market structure and main trend determination. We look at some computerized technical analysis such as moving average, the MACD, Bollinger Band, relative strength index, moving the average directional index which is term as ABS, look at average T through range, um, the TDI, that is traders dynamic index and Ichimoku. Then from there we look at um, divergence, Support and resistance, trend lines and trend channels, and breakout trading. Stage four, we consider candlesticks makeup, resorptions and break fill strategy, pivot points, demand and supply zones, Fibonacci retracement and extensions, profit maximization techniques, multiple time frame correlation, chart patterns news trading, harmonics, and some introduction to area trades and 
fractals. Then you see how we can put everything together as one. And some for trading strategies and some other guidelines on how to consider or how to do live trading. So without wasting much time, um, let's begin with um, the introduction phase. So what is forex and forex market? So forex simply means foreign exchange. We embark on it every day for those that buy things online, transact with banks, travel for business trip. You are intuitively exchanging your currencies, currency with one larger one. But here, we are introducing you to the actual forex market where your banks, investment institutions, and other financial affiliates invest and trade with those monies you save with them. Before, this was only meant for big banks before the onset of retail traders that give access to you and me to trade this largest financial market or high liquidity market. So Forex is considered as, as one of the largest financial markets in the world and according to retail service about um, six trillion dollars is traded directly on this forex market. When you compare this to uh, the New York Stock Exchange and crypto market, the total market cap for all cryptocurrencies as of now is around um, 282 billion dollars and which is almost 200 times less than what is traded daily on um, forex market. So you can see how liquid this forex market is. So this new stock exchange, which is the largest stock exchange in the world, has a total market cap of about $21 trillion. That means if forex run just one month, that is we have 20 trading days in a month, and it will be around 53 times larger than this uh, New York Stock Exchange. And that is how liquid um, this forex market is. So people are keen into this highly liquid market daily and cutting their share of this large market capitalization. But the only thing is that it is only few people that trade this market because um, little have the knowledge on how to trade it. And even those who know don't know it well, and so they keep on losing money. And and that is um is what we will be doing over the course of the weeks. Um we will be here together, yes. The weeks that we are going to be here together, that is why we are going to be discussing over here. So even some of you may have friends that trade for us, but um, you know, they will never tell you their source of income, but they will rather stockpile this knowledge um to themselves and so you always have to be submit to them rather they will not teach you yes so that you always um, go to them for assistance but that is not the best okay so um, let's look at um, the next village and so what is traded on forest you see this forest market is very large enough to accommodate many commodities for example we have um, currency pairs precious metals oils cryptocurrencies and cdfs etc so that's we exchange currency with another. Have you ever pondered what uh, your bank do with the monies you keep in your fixed account? So let me open your eyes a little to see how banks make money through foreign exchange. Let's assume that you have $1,000 that someone sent to you from abroad and you you are glad enough you went to the bank to exchange it into cities. Yes, your local currency here in Ghana cities. So the bank tells you that, oh, the exchange rate is 4 cities, 50 pesos. And so you gladly collect 4,500 cities as equivalent to that thousand dollar that was sent to you. The next day, you also went to the same bank because probably something urgent came up and you also need same thousand dollars to do your rounds or one or two things and now the bank are telling you that the rate is five cities so virtually you pay up to five thousand cities for that same thousand dollar amount of which you gave yours to them at four cities fifty pesos and you see they have made a difference of what five hundred cities 
that is how lucrative this bank is and they don't want you to partake in this large market which is mostly meant for them but however thank god for retail brokers who gave us access to trade with them so who are these brokers we have been in the introductory aspect but we are gradually entering into the main topics yes but a forest broker is a firm that gives you access to financial markets so to understand the importance of forest broker let me take you back to a little history of forest previously like i told you this was mainly meant for big financial institutions and not even common local banks Main financial institutions like the central banks of Ghana, central bank of Singapore, central banks of countries, and not their local branches. So only big speculators and high capitalized investment funds. And you will need large capital, that is millions of dollars, to also trade this. But as time moves on, the rich men in the local banks also started trading through trading, though the capital requirement was still much only for big boys so that was then men of the wall street so then came the event of retail brokers or forest brokers they came to revolutionize this um, forest world they made it possible for everyone no matter your country of origin your background your financial status to trade this highly liquid market with any barrier or with no barrier of entry Anybody could just contact a broker, open an account, deposit some money, and trade for us for the comfort of their own. But basically, these brokers um, they come in two forms. Yes, um, you have those that we term as the market makers, and as its name suggests, they um, set or make their own ask and bid price. We shall discuss ask and bid price afterwards or as, as we move out on. So for them, they set their own ask and bid price for themselves. And we have the other party, which is the ECN, or what we call the Exchange Communication Network, Electronic Communication Network, who use the bid, best bid and ask price available to them from different institutions on the interbank market. So brokers provide us with what we call leverage, simply means with little capital, you can trade for us. Because of retail brokers, you now not need to be extremely rich like before. And also before the invent of retail brokers, you place your forest orders through the central banks. Or well, that is if you want to do this uh, business, you have to do it via or through other rules big banks who were having access during them times but right now with forest you basically be on your bed and place your orders because you have your mt4 and your mt5 on your device or in your, your ipad your phone or laptop or whatever and internet and technology has also made things a lot easier and people like me and you can participate in this forest market because of this um, retail brokers but currently as i'm talking today before you can even trade on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, you must have fulfilled a whole lot of criteria, so numerous criteria. First of all, you should be above the age of 21, of which you may qualify. But your annual salary should, salary should not be less than $100,000. So they have capped the minimum investment amount, also around $25,000, of which um, or prevent people like you and me from even venturing in that areas. So all these are just needed just to partake in New York Stock Exchange. And that is why it is open to few elites. And the big men keep getting richer because they have those requirements or so they can provide such monies and trade with them. So there are many forest brokers in existence as of today. So um, the one that by my own recommendation that you can trade with is Hot Forest. We have the FSTM, FSTM, we have Light Forest, Insta Forest, SN, and 
Gaston and many more. There are a whole lot of them out there. But uh, as time goes on, I'll guide you on the one that is customer friendly and with swift service of discounts, low spread, and also with accurate codes as well. So, what are the various um, trading sessions and trading time? So, one me would ask, um, when do you trade? You know, this forest market is a 24 hours market, and it is usually known or called as a market that does not sleep. It's open for 24 hours. That means you can wake up any time of the day within the area within which you are, except for weekends. That is, if you are trading forest. But even now, you have these um, index, index, that is volatility index, and so that can also be traded during the weekend times. But um, with forest specifically, it is only 24 or 5. That is Monday up to Friday. Yes. So when you open your chart on weekends, you will not see any movement, nothing will click there. Yes, it means the market is closed. But though this is 24 hours market, I will have different sessions. Forest trading sessions and times are as follows. Yes, we have um, a Sydney session, Tokyo session, London session, Frankfurt sessions, and New York sessions. Yes, and so when you come down here, you see these various sessions are named on capitals of countries in those regions. Yes, for example, when you pick the Asian session, that is popularly known as the Tokyo sessions as well. So, um, when do these sessions open? Yes, so I have listed here the various sessions and when we are in summertime, we expect it to open at these hours. Yes, you see we have here at 16 standard time and the GMT also here. So, Sydney sessions open at 6 p.m. EST and 11 p.m. So, you just have to um, take note of these things. But... Um, when one you become um, properly or get to understand the whole concept, you will not even pay attention to some of these things. But as a beginner, you need to know that um, these are the normal or the regular times that the market usually opens. Yes. So, though this may vary by just one hour or more, depending on whether you are in a summer or winter. Yes, but basically, those are the standard time. So you use your country's location to know a session that is open at any particular point in time. Yeah, so um, because um, the time is also in Greenwich region, that's the GMT, South Africa, which is class two, GMT, means you have to add two hours to the stipulated time above to know the opening time of any session that you want to trade. Find yourself in Nigeria, which is plus one GMT. You still have to add one hour ahead. But if you are fortunate and you are in Ghana, then yours is plus zero zero. So you need not to do anything. Just stick to those standard time up there and, and follow it prompt. So you just select the time that will be convenient to you. I mind you, it is 24 hours open. And that is the beauty of forest. You decide when to work. Does not stop you from your normal routines. But when you come, um, since it has an opening time, definitely it also has time that is close. Yes. So for closing time, when one of the session is open, it lasts for nine hours. So you are going to add only nine hours to the various corresponding hours. Um, up there to know the closing time of the various sessions so for example when you pick Sydney session first which opens 9 p.m gmt during winter time you add my hours to the opening time to get the closing time that is you it will close 6 a.m gmt or london session which opens at 3 p.m you add my hours to get the closing time that is around 12 o'clock p.m GMT and so on. Yes. So when is this suitable to trade? But as far as um trading is concerned, you can trade any session that will be convenient to you. But note this: 
always trade when two or more sessions are open at the same time yes and it gives the market more volatility or liquidity and that means more money for you as a trader yes when there is more volatility or more liquidity then there is more money for example when sydney sessions open around 9 p.m um, there's not going to be much volatility in the market because um it's only a session open but um when you wait for a moment and say one other session or techno uh, tokyo session is also joined then you see it becomes two so the volatility is going to be high there's going to be more liquidity and so you can trade with ease yes but we have also various hours that um, I, I will not advise you should even try or trade sometimes you can but because um, there will not be much participation in the market i would advise you stay away when the market um, during sunday evening yes you know everyone is sleeping during weekends and so normally majority don't trade during hours and also fridays liquidity die out yes so um you see during these times you don't also have to trade holidays so everybody is also on break and major news events yes some people trade news event because when there is news and those high impact news they move the market and so when you have the right strategy you can buy if you can stand you also stay await with before market can move anywhere and also when it's during some american idol the nba finance and other super bowl games too sometimes the volatility in the market is quite um low and so it's not advisable to also trade yes so um here are some technologies that are used in forex you see just like every field in life there is a unique language that is atypical to that field those in those that read law they use some terms that is peculiar to lawyer or peculiar to lawyers yes and they only understand and you know so in other fields so, and likewise in forest we also have our own language and you have to be familiar with these terms for you to understand what we will be doing so um, follow closely from here because as soon as or uh, because soon you will start meeting forest traders and you need to know um, some of these terms yes and you know almost all analysis or analysis are being done um, in forest based on some of these languages if you are not familiar with them sometimes um, you will not even understand or even know what we are talking about here. So um, the first thing that we are going to discuss is here to go long. I want to hear any forest trader saying uh, he or she went long run. It's probably any pair or any financial asset. It simply means to buy. So when you hear forest trader saying they are going long, that means they are buying that particular currency pair or that particular financial instrument irrespective of that instrument yes it could be a currency pair in a precious metal natural gas cryptocurrency stock market or whatever it is just a term which means to buy the opposite is to go short yes this is the opposite of going long and it simply means to sell so if you hear a forest trader telling you that he or she is going short on a particular financial instrument it also means that probably person is going to um, sell or short that particular currency pair. We have a bullish market, and a bullish market here um, shows a market that is moving to the upside. Yes, it is soaring to the upside. Yes, and the other version is the bearish market. The bearish market here is used for market that is going down. And it's opposite of bullish market. We use bulls here in this taxonomy to represent bias. And we use bear here also to represent uh, sellers. We have what we call trending market. When you say trending market, a market is trending when, when it has a particular direction. Yes, it may either be trending to the upside or trending to the downside. So when you hear um, a trending market, it means this market has a direction and it is not consolidating, but rather going either the upside or it is coming to downside 
Yes. We have a hackish and this term is mostly used when referring to the central bank governor or a personnel of any country of a country. When they are hackish, they tend to be liberal on interest rates and are willing to increase it. Yes, and that is a good news for investors. Yes. And when they are dovish, it is opposite of hackish. Yes, financial personnel who are dovish are very restrictive. We do not want to temper with the interest rates. So we want to even reduce it. And this is bad news for investors. Like what is happening in GBP now. That was what transpired some time ago when they tried to um, even reduce the interest rates, which was very bad news for most investors. We have uh, this term here, ranking market. And the market is said to be ranking if there is no clear cut trend. That means it's the opposite of trending. It is neither going up nor down. It's just revolving or bouncing around to um, this point. So um, you need to know as a forest trader whether a market is um, trending or ranging. And this is because some trading strategies are best applied in trending market, whilst others are also best applied in trend ranking market. You soon see numerous strategies, and it's all left with you, the individual, to choose the one that. Um, you are comfortable with um, as we go along in the trading and we meet near term to I will also take my time to explain what is necessary to you but note you need these technologies for you to be able to understand how analysis are made in the fat forest market you will tend to follow with it the discussions or even when you even turn on your TV or any online material that is related to forest markets you will see some of these be personally before when I started um, this forest market, those economic news and business news and CCN were something boring that um, I don't even want to listen. But um, because most of the time um, I was not even trying to like I don't understand um, the jargon that they are saying. But now I don't miss any. Just because now if they say blue, I know what the blue means. They say bear, I know what who a bear is. Yes. So they are factors that move the financial market. Yes. So you start interacting with most traders um, who previously you may not understand um, some of the terms that they are saying. But once you are able to capture these few um, technologies within here, I think it is a good start that you can start listening to some of them and also understand what they mean or the language that they are speaking. All right, so um, let's look at some forms of analysis. There are basically three forms of analysis. We have fundamental analysis, technical analysis, and sentimental analysis. But um, let's stick to the basic first, because this is a basic class. This is a basic MD technique. And so as we move along to the advanced class, I will do well and explain give you some strategies on how to go about the other forms of analysis so um, we'll be going into the crust of the matter from here like i said these fundamentals are the bedrock of most the things that we do in forex so let's begin with this um, fundamental and fundamental this is refers to trading with news it involves analyzing the forex market using Important factors like import and export indices, political stabilities of countries, strength of a country's economy, and trade wars between countries, local violence within countries, and so on. So all these affect the economic value of the currency and a particular of a particular country. Yes, like example. Um, if you hear that Libya is in crisis, and you know Libya, they produce oil. You definitely know that the value of Libya oil is definitely going to fall or decrease. Yes. Or when you say the export value of goods from China to other countries has also increased, mean if they are exporting more, they are getting more. So the yen will also be doing well. So um, all these factors are put into consideration to help you analyze um, this forest market fundamentally. 
Yes, so you buy a general rule as a basic rule. You buy currencies or assets that is doing well. So, for instance, with this scenario about since Chinese yen is doing well as a result of exporting more goods, we are going to be buying those currencies. And those currencies that are weakening, that is Libya currency, which is not doing well as a result of those crises, we are also going to sell. But that is not the case. At some point in time, if it is also doing well, we will tend to be a bull on that. Yeah, we don't care whether uh, it's, it's not like we should be always selling one currency or buying one currency. No, at any particular point in time, when the fundamental favors buys opportunities, we are biased. When it also favors um, selling opportunities, also, then we are also a bear on that market as well. And that is just a basic rule. It is not just going to be stage for a like buying or sell like what we do in our local market or buy and sell like things in our groceries and stuff like that. And we will actually get to know what um, the buy or sell really means soon. Yes, but it is also better to have this knowledge um, at the back of your mind. Yes, that we buy currencies who can be economy is getting stronger and so one that is weakening so we make this analysis of whether the economy of a country is getting weaker or stronger using fundamental analysis so we put into consideration like things that we mentioned about um, like interest rates export and import indices retail sales consumer confidence consumer price index and that is a cpi and of countries markets and we check if there is any political crisis or not or any ongoing elections to which may also have um, effect on their country's currency because um, if there is ongoing election and sometimes um, because of people may fear that there will be war and other things investors may decide to pull out their money small small which is also going to affect the doings of this uh, countries as well but um you will soon see a whole lot of this but among all these news or all these indicators or um, fundamentals there is um this one that is also hooked by every trader which is known as um, the non-farm PO and short as nfp and this non-farm PO is a news which is released by u.s bureau of labor and statistics and it is an indicator of how strong the U.S. economy is, how strong or weakness the U.S. economy is. So in forest, to um, over seventy percent of all the currency pairs are linked with um, U.S. dollar. So you should endeavor to know at all time or at all costs the strength or weakness of the U.S. dollar because this strength or weakness will help you uh, make a whole lot of trading decisions because it is paired with most currencies. Yes. So NFP is considered as one of the biggest news in forex markets. It is a direct indicator of U.S. economy strength, and that is why traders also care much about it. And um, this news is released on first Friday of every new month, exactly 12:30 or sometimes 1 o'clock p.m. GMT. And you can get this news from your MT4 by just clicking the news button, of which I'll show you very soon. And read, or better still, visit um, investing.com or forestfactory.com, and you get access to this news also as well. So, as a forest trader, you don't have to miss such news. That is, if you are trading fundamentally, when time for NFP, wherever you are, you make sure um, you take your phone or your device, and, and because market can move or jump from. Just thousand five hundred five hundred pips two hundred pips about within just seconds because the volatility is very 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 high and massive. And remember, like I said before, you need volatility before you trade. So if there is going to be a volatility as a result of this NFP, and you are a fundamental trader, as me asking to trade based on fundamentals, news, and those things, then I think you shouldn't be somewhere else, but rather yourself to also make some trips from the market but normally um, this NFP contains a number of jobs that is created by the United States the unemployment rates in the United States whether 
it's also increasing or decreasing and it's also tell traders and invested three sectors of the economy added more job than the other and the average daily earnings of the united states whether it is also increasing or also decreasing so all this gives investors an idea on which sector of the economy is growing and hence where we should also invest in yes so this gives the federal reserve of the united states insight on how the economy of the u.s is faring and hence determine how they implement their policies for example if the news is released and you see u.s added more job than the former value because we have the previous value which is the former and the new one if they added more than the former value that means um unemployment rate has decreased when they added more than um, the former value yes meaning unemployment rate has increased yes sorry i had i need to change this and it gives you an idea of how U.S. economy is doing and hence guide you or guide your forest trading decisions as a forest trader. And this NSP or the non-farm payroll is also released once in every month. But know that it will have useful effect throughout the whole month. So the end of the month, sometimes can go further to sometime quarterly or yearly thereabout. But as a for retail trader, you always want to key into just five minutes, like I said, or I mentioned earlier. Just small minutes of your time and catch your pips when you, you are off. And that is how volatile it can be. Imagine uh, making the money that you make in a week just in five minutes. Just use for the week. Yes. And there are a whole lot of strategies on how to trade the NSP. We shall consider that one too as we move along. We have um, technical analysis as the second form of analysis and this is also the framework which traders study price movement yes the theory that a person can look at historical price movement and determine the current trading conditions and potential price movement so the main evidence for using technical analysis is that theoretically all current market information is reflected in price yes so if price reflects all the information that is out there then price action is all one need one would really need to make a trade that is also their beliefs yes so technical analysis involves the use of the various forms of indicators um chart patterns candlesticks Fibonacci, pivot points, and whole other whole lot of things that we shall consider to do analysis. So this is the major forms of trading done by all traders, and it's because uh, news doesn't come often. Like NFP, which comes once in a month, every month, uh, once in a month, yes. But that will be to another month before you see or hit the jackpot again. But in between um, this month, that traders trade and make use of all these mentioned about and I call technical analysis. Yes. And this technical analysis is the bedrock of forest trading. Yes, as a forest trader, if you don't know how to analyze market technically, then you have not arrived yet. You are just a bystander. Yes. So that is why you need to learn technical analysis carefully. And in fact, um, majority of the things listed on the outline that is page three, can see page three from here. That is price action up to the bottom left here. Or it's talking about um, technical analysis or there yeah, are various ways that you can analyze the market technically. Like um, Elliot with Fibonacci, candlestick, chart pattern, five star support and resistance. And we shall take time and I'll be recording videos too on them one by one on how you can use any of those forms of analysis and make good sums of money from the market. The other type is um, sentimental analysis. And um, 
Forest sentiment refers to the overall feeling the market participant have about the performance of a particular currency pair. Yes. Um, every forest trader participating in the forest market has his own his or her own opinion about um, the direction of the market. Earlier we said that price should theoretically accurate theoretically and accurately reflect all available market information. That is when we are talking about technical analysis. But unfortunately for us as traders, it isn't that simple. Yes. The markets do not simply reflect all information out there because traders will just act the same way. Yes. So each trader has its own opinion or explanation of why market is acting or market is behaving the way they do. So um, sometimes we refer this market is just like a Facebook is a complex network made up of individuals who want to spam or our news or views or whatever. So each trader thoughts and opinion which are expressed through whatever position they take, yes, helps form the overall sentiment of the market, yes. When talk of sentiment, it's just the prevailing market attitude. And the problem is that as a trader, no matter how strongly you feel about a certain trade, you can't move the market in your favor. Probably you may have a very sentiment on one currency pair, but you cannot move it or force it to go that direction. Yes, even if you truly believe that the dollar is going up, but everyone else is bearish on it, there's nothing much that you can do about it. Yes, as a trader, you have to take all of this into consideration, and it's up to you to gauge how the market is feeling. Yeah, how the market is feeling, or how gauge the market on your own feelings. Um, whether it is bullish or very bearish and it is all going to be dependent on um, your analysis yes but ultimately it's also up to you to find out how you want to incorporate market sentiment into your trading strategy yes we will talk about tda uh, that is the traders direct uh, divergence index traders dynamic index yes that tdi um, which comes with a sentiment indicator which help you to be able to measure the overall sentiment of a particular asset. So if you choose to simply ignore sentiment, okay, that is you, yes. But hey, we are telling you now, it's your loss. Being able to gauge market sentiment can be an important tool in your toolbox. All right, so, um, on our chart, um, we have um, currency pairs as part of the outlines. And you see, we are actually getting into the practical phase. So, um, I want you to also start doing the practice per the applications that you downloaded on your charts. Um, let's try and open a demo account. And you know, this demo account is uh, going to give you a taste of how the rare account looks like so everything that you need in your live account trading is also on the demo account just that the money over there is just a virtual money that you can't withdraw so we are just going to use it for a practice so step one you open your mt4 on your device and you see the first time that you open it you are going to be seeing these two options yes you can see um Open a demo account, choose a broker and register an account to learn trading and test your strategies and log in into your existing account. That is, if you have an account with any broker, you are just going to choose this option. But as a new person, you select open a demo account. And step two, once you click on um, open a demo account, this help you to help you to trade and practice with free virtual money like I stated earlier and normally I allow all my students to study with it yes you can't just or no one will advise you to open a live account and start trading whilst you don't have any knowledge about the whole thing you need to take probably a whole lot of time for yourself and study a whole lot of things before 
can put in or fund your account with Red Money and start trading. So most brokers also allow you to register demo account from their site, but um, some will also allow you to open it. So for here, once you click on open your demo account, you see this find broker here, that search button. Search for FS Choice, which will allow you to create a demo account. You can use any other broker also there. That is when they give you the chance. And make all the necessary settings for yourself. And any amount that you want, mind you, it's just a virtual money. You can choose any amount that you want. And you set the leverage to, of which we will discuss leverage to later on. At, is to, one is to 500 or one is to 1000. And you accept the various terms and conditions over there and click OK. So as this is where you see the list preferred currencies, the currencies that are listed in your MT4. Yes. When you click on the code, after creating, you see I've created my demo account here. And when I click on the code, I'm going to see something like this here on my left. And you can see, you see these copious um, currencies written there with their own symbols as shown on my right side here. Yes, you can see we have EUR, USD, we have BPUSD, UJ, we have UCAD, UCHEF, um, and, and CO. The EUR means Euro. USD means United States dollar. We have CHF, which is there for Swiss France. The GBP stands for Great British Pound. The AUD means Australian dollar. We have the New Zealand dollar for NZD. KBY for Japanese yen. The CAD, that is CAD for Canadian dollar. And we have the symbol for gold, SAU, for gold. The TRY for Turkish. Lira, Lira, we have our CNY, which is the Chinese yen, and you see among the various currency pairs listed below are considered as the major pairs. We have what we call the major pairs and minor pairs. We see them very soon, and we have exotics and co. But these pairs, the Euro USD, um, UJ, GBP USD, UCHEF, UCAD, AUD USD, and New Zealand are considered as the major pairs. They are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are eight pairs in all. I think I missed some of them here. And these currency pairs listed above are considered as the majors. And these pairs all contain US dollar. Yes, on the side of most. They contain, or what do you call, these pairs contain the US dollar on one side and are mostly or frequently traded. And that is why they are very liquid worldwide and so they are considered as the major um, pairs yes and we have um, the exotic pairs and these pairs are made up of one major currency pair with the currency pair of an emerging economy such as Brazil, Mexico, Hungary for example are listed below you can see we have um, here USD as a major pair listed with Hong Kong USD listed with Singapore, USD with South Africa, we have USD, Thailand, Mexico, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. You see, we have one major in there, and we have the emerging economy. We have what we call cross currencies. Yes, and any currency that does not have um, the USD as part of it is known as cross currency. So we have the Euro, Japan, the UK, or United States. Kingdom, which is the GBP versus Japanese yen, we have the Swiss France or Switzerland versus Japanese yen, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and so on. We have the other pairs too, also here, and all these are currency pairs, various countries' currencies. Yes, they are whole lot, but you don't need all of them to survive. Yes, we have um, different ways to trade forest because forest is so awesome. Traders came up with a number of different ways to invest or speculate in currencies. Among these, the most popular one is Forest Board. We have features, we have options, and exchange traded fund. That is the ETFS. Yes. So let's look at what this means one by one. 
Let me pick at the sports market. The sports market currencies are traded immediately on the spot, just as its name or as its name implies, using current market price that is CMP. What is awesome about this market is its simplicity, liquidity, a tight spread, and round the clock fishing that is also 24 hours. And it is very easy to participate in this market since the account can be opened with just as little as $25. You have the features, and features are contracts to buy or sell a certain asset at a specific or specified price in future date. So that is why they are called features. Yes, so um, forest features were created by the Chicago Merchandise Exchange and CME. And since features contracts are standardized and traded through a centralized exchange, the market is very transparent and well regulated. And this means that um, price and transactions information are readily available since it's being controlled and monitored by a whole lot of um, interest state parties or stakeholders. We have the other version that is the options and an option is a financial instrument that gives the buyer the right or the option but not an obligation to buy or sell an asset at a specified price on the options expiration date. So if a trader sold an option then he or she will be obliged to buy or sell an asset at a specific price at an expiration date. Just like futures, options are so also traded on an exchange, yes, such as the Chicago Board Options Exchange, we have the International Securities Exchange or Philadelphia Stock Exchange. However, the disadvantage of trading forex options is that market hours are limited for certain options and the liquidity is not nearly as great as futures or sports markets. We have the ETF, that is the Exchange Traders Fund, are also the youngest members of the forest world, and an ETF to contain a set of stocks combined with some currencies, allowing the trader to diversify with different assets. So these are created by financial institutions and can be traded like stock through an exchange like forest options the limitations in trading the ETFs is that the market isn't open 24 hours also since the ETFs contain stocks these are subject to trading commissions and other transactions cost but you can see among all the aforementioned or what I've explained out there we have also psyched ourselves to trading of forest and stocks yes, because um, here there is no fixed loss size, no middleman, low transactions cost, the market is also um, open 24 hours and no one can corner the market. We have leverage, high liquidity, instant execution orders. We have various forms of orders that is buy limit, sell limit, the stop orders depending on the day or order that we shall discuss it. And it's also less influenced by analysts and brokerage firms. Yes. And so you see the forest market have much advantage and that is why the majority are trying to be there and forgetting or forgoing the other um, type of uh, forest trading stuffs. Yes, so um, to add currencies to um, the codes that you have seen on your MT4, you straight away just click on the plus sign here. And like I discussed, what is traded on Forest earlier on, I told you that it is large enough to accommodate a whole lot of things. So you can see we have a metals here. When you open this folder, you are going to see the various assets over there. You just click on it to add it to what you have over here. You have um, crypto, the energy is forest. We have forest one. The one is just for the measures we have for the other exotics and other forest currencies too. The crash and boom, and this is binary options and so they are all there. And um, there is no limitations or no restrictions. You can um, trade any of them. Just open it and add it if you want to. That is all. Yes. 
So um, you can open any of the folder above and add as many as it that you want. And you see the red ones are sold and the blue ones are bought. That is just by the view, just normal. And also, um, in the figures in blue, when you are trading, uh, you, um, maybe a profit and the red one are lost as normally known. Red is for danger. So just have these sort of things in mind which I consider um, explaining things to you as we move along. So now these currency pairs are not listed singly. That is, they are not one one. You couldn't see only USD just there like that. But rather, you saw something like UG, USD, JPY. And you note, the first currency is the base. That is the USD, while the second one is considered as the fourth currency. So for here, UJ here, you see you have USD as the base currency and JPY as the quote currency. Now, except for some few exceptions that we shall discuss, the base currency is usually stronger than the quote currency. So here we have the USD being the base and it's the, what do you call it, the JPY here as the quote currency. And like I said, you are all aware that um, USD is stronger than Japanese yen. So the base is always stronger than the food, but there are exceptions. For example, two. When you pick um GBP USD, that is Great British Fund versus the US dollar. Here, GBP is the first or the base, and while the USD is the first currency. And you all know the reason for it, just because the pound sterling is more stronger than the USD, and that is why the pound sterling is written as the base currency, and hence the base currency. Is stronger than the the quote currency. Yes, we have euro card here, and this is called a cross currency. Yes, and in forest, like I stated up there, any currency pair that does not have the USD as part of the quote is considered as a cross currency. So this pair has no USD as part of the quote. Hence, it is a cross currency pair. Yes, the spread is always higher than the USD pairs because. Um, Majority are not trading or are not focusing on those pairs, so there's no much liquidity or volatility in those uh, pairs. So we will come to discuss um, what spread means also later. But in this example, if you see, we have um, the euro as our base, while the card is our code currency here. And now, before um, you understand some exceptions, um, you let's look at the figures besides each of the currency pairs now. Yes, when you look at those currency pairs on your MT4, you will see a set of two numbers. Yes, some are sometimes in red, some are also in blue. Yes, color. But for now, let's just focus on the numbers and not do the equations. And I always like discussing complicated things um, um, just gradually. So let's um, look at it step by step here. So you can see we have various codes, and these are the numbers. Call them the ask and the bid price that we shall discuss them in school. Yes, and now we are on the exceptions. So let's start with the first example I gave, which was UG, USDJ, where you can see UG here. If you look by the side of um, GPY on this screenshot, you will see some numbers written as 108.47. Though, if you have noted on chart or from your goods it is constantly fluctuating yes but let's use that a single value a screenshot to do this explanation yes i remember usd is the base here whilst jpy is the code when um you pick euro usd see here euro as a base while the usd as a code currency and this is because um the euro is stronger than the usd and besides that currency pair, you see um, something like 1.1195. Taking the static value of the screenshot as an example, remember I told you it's always fluctuating. What this is telling you is that you will need 1.995 USD to get one unit of euro currency. So further testifying that um, the euro is stronger than the USD. So um, let's get to some few other exceptions. And there are some cases that you will see the quote currency 
clearly um, stronger than the base coins, but it's still written first. A typical example is the New Zealand USD, where um, you all know that um, USD is more stronger than the New Zealand, but here we have New Zealand being the base here, and we have um, USD being the foot. But as someone who has received this training, um, not just a three day seminar, all you need to do is to have a look at the values beside it. And, and testify or be able to tell that indeed the USD is still stronger than the New Zealand. So when you look at the screenshots, you see that we have something like um, 0 0.6523. And those good in mass will have observed something that the value 0 0.6523 is less than 1. And it is telling you that you need 0 0.6523 usd to get one unit of the new zealand meaning you need smaller units of the usd to get the what do you call one unit of the new zealand so you immediately know that even though the new zealand is written first or is considered as the what do you call the base here but it is still um what do you call it weaker or the strong weaker or the usd is stronger than it Yes, and another example here for the exception is at uh, USD, um, AUD USD. Here too, we have um, 0 0.6871. You can scroll above and check on the screenshot, or even have a look at it and um, what you call it once before. And it is clear to you that USD is stronger than AUD yes, to the Australian dollar. So, hence, it is supposed to be the base. Are you now be asking why AUD first before USD? But before you do this or ask this question, you first of all have to consider the values. And you could see that the value written there for the quote currency is very lesser than 1. And in this example, the quote is written as 0 0.6871. That means you need less than $1. That is 0.6871 USD to get one unit of the AUD. And apart from these exceptions, generally the first currency, which is the base currency, is sometimes or always stronger than the good currency. Also, like I explained above, the value besides it is how much the good currency you need to get one unit of the base currency. So um, we shall look at our next topic, which was MT4, we'll be making references to them constantly as we move along. So um, let's pause here or end here for today. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. You can chat me up for any other questions or clarifications on.